All right, hi there. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Svelte Table, and this is a good option if you want a pretty lightweight table. Um, you can see it's got some documentation here, and you're going to pass it a bunch of rows in this format. So it has some columns here, and this looks pretty intimidating, but I will show you a way to make it simpler. Okay, so the basics are you've got your rows here. And then this is how I did my columns. So this is just the most basic way to uh, define your columns. And what I'm doing here is object.keys through the first row, so this one. So for each of these language word meaning, it's going to map that key to this object. So key equals key, title equals key, value equals row at that given key. So the row is this full thing and the value of it will be a row at that key, and sortable equals true. So if I do that, and I pass it in the rows and columns like that, then I get this very basic table that you can sort, um, and this is what it looks like. Okay, so if you wanna add some styles to it, you can do something like this. So have a global, so you wrap it around a some kind of class, my Svelte table, and then have a global MySvelte table at, for example, TD, if you want to target the TD um, cells. Okay, you can save that. And this will make them all yellow and have a beautiful 5 pixel black border. Okay, so if we want to make it a bit more um, customizable, there are these filter options. So by filter options, this will let you, from a drop-down pick, um, to only see certain rows. So I'll show you what this does, and then I'll explain um, what it's doing. So I'll give you these drop downs, Spanish, German, or Mandarin, and then I'll only see the Mandarin one. And same here. So this one's not very useful because it's just all of them because there's no none of them are the same, or hello or bye. So I can filter them like that. So uh, it does take a, quite a bit of code to do something fairly simple, but um, what this does is filter, so for all of the rows, you get the unique rows. So um, I'm making a set, that way they're unique, uh, there can't be any duplicates, and I'm mapping each row. So for each row, go row to key. So the reason I am doing this so much is because this is these things are passing in the entire row, and I'm, I only wanna deal with the row at a given uh, column. So that's what the key is. Okay, so this will map each row to just its value at the key. So if this is the meaning column, it'll just be the meaning. And it'll make it a set, so it's the unique rows. And then you need to pass them in as value name and name whatever. Okay, so it needs a value and a name, and I'm just making them all be called whatever the value is. Okay, so it'll just be hello and bye. That's basically what it's doing is... Um, just getting all the unique unique names and returning them back here. Okay, and then filter value is basically how you want to filter it. So in his example, he has uh, some numbers. So let's go to the example. Um, ID, so 0 to 10, 10 to 20. So if you want something like that, then you can come look at um, how he did that. But this, I think, will cover most cases. You can do it like this. Um, another thing you can do is render value. So you can put some HTML around um, around the around the value. Oh. And for these, I made some classes. So language will be blue, word will be green, meaning will be red. Um, so it'll get those classes. <clears throat> so right now they're just inputs. Uh, it's not very useful because it can't really you can't really change it and update it. Uh, but you could do whatever you wanted there. Um, and here are the classes. So the blue, green, red. So you'll see here I'm adding the class classes at key. So classes are up here, and the key is language, word, or meaning. So each column will get a different color then, like that. And then there's a header class you can also do. I just made it the exact same class, uh, either blue, green, or red and that'll make the header up here, uh, that color. Well, it's not that that is the color, it's just giving it the class. 
Um, so if you want to, you give them multiple classes and they don't have to be color or anything. It can be whatever you want. Okay, so this is what you got then. You can filter, you can sort by clicking on these. Um, you can change the colors. You can change any of the CSS, really. Um, you can put HTML around each cell. And then finally, there is, you can add on-click events. So, oops, let's see, there we go. So when I click on a row, this will alert. So e.detail is for any event dispatched. Um, and what it passes is the row. And then if I want to get the language, I do that. Um, so I click it, it says German. But it can do whatever you want. Any JavaScript you can put in here, Mandarin. Uh, and you can get any key. So whenever I click on a row, like this one, it could say, if I did dot meaning, this would say by. But right now it's dot language, so it says Mandarin. And then when I click on column, it will do whatever I put there. There's also a on click cell, which passes key and row. Okay, so that's quite a bit. Um, I hope you were able to follow all of that. Um, this is the code for how I define my columns. And these are the rows. Um, yeah, you will need to npm install Svelte table. Forgot to mention that. Okay, so that's all. Thank you for watching, and bye.